For more on Paul Manafort's growing legal troubles, let's bring in Paul Rosenzweig, a former senior counsel in the Ken Starr investigation of President Clinton and senior fellow at R Street Institute. Paul, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so he's led away, his personal effects are taken away. What is life going to be like for him now as he awaits trial? Well, it's not going to be as comfortable as it was beforehand. Uh, jail is not a pleasant place to be, and uh, it's pretty likely that they'll keep him somewhere nearby and not in one of the club-fed prisons up in Pennsylvania. So uh, I'm, if I'm Paul Manafort, I'm looking at a difficult transition in life, at least for the next few days. So obviously, none of the crimes that he's charged with have any direct connection to the campaign, although a lot of folks want to muddy the waters about that. To be clear, these aren't tied to anything dealing with the campaign. But uh, the president is doing his best to uh, distance himself a little bit from uh, Mr. Manafort. Here's what he had to say when asked about this this morning before the bail was revoked. He worked for me, what, for 49 days or something? A very short period of time. I feel badly for some people because they've gone back 12 years to find things about somebody, and I don't think it's right. Okay, so only a short amount of time on the campaign, but now he's behind bars. He's going to be sitting there and have a lot of time to think about this. Is there a chance he has anything that would be helpful to Mueller and the investigators? Well, that's the $64,000 question, isn't it? It's clear that this effort to put Manafort in jail was an effort to ramp up the pressure on him. So to the extent that he does have something, now is the time he's going to be asked to come forward because now is when the reality of his situation is being brought forth to him. If he has nothing to trade, if he continues to fight, he's looking at spending the rest of his life in jail, and that can't be uncomfortable for him. So I don't know what Manafort knows. Nobody does. Uh, but if there is something in his past that is relevant to uh, President Trump's uh, campaign and the allegations of Russian collusion, now is likely the time he's going to he's going to come forward with it, unless, of course, the president pardons him. Well, and the president has said, though, there's nothing he can give up on him because he did nothing wrong. There was no collusion. So he feels confident whether it's Manafort or Michael Cohen or other people close to him, when the screws are put to them by uh, these different investigations, he says that's fine. He feels badly for them, but there's nothing that would impact him. If that's really the case, if, if, if we accept that as true, then it really is an unfortunate thing to have been in the president's orbit in the last year because there are a half dozen people, Manafort, Cohen, who are now facing significant jail time for other unrelated right. criminal acts that they probably, you know, there's a, a lot of substance to some of the allegations against them, um, it would not have come to light but for the fact that they chose to throw in with the president. And so they're going to be in a very difficult situation under scrutiny but without anything to share. Yeah, and he, he sounds like he is gravely concerned about a number of those people because of the connection that's now brought them to this place. I want to talk to you about the Inspector General's report as well. Uh, Peter Strzok, one of the FBI agents, we see new text from him we hadn't seen before, this one about the president said Trump's not going to become the president, quote, will stop it, that kind of thing. And while the ultimate conclusion of the report was that the political bias of the people involved didn't impact their decisions in the Hillary Clinton email investigation, it seemed that the IG left the door open with respect to the Russia part of this. Um, saying this in part, we did not have confidence that Strzok's decision to prioritize the Russia investigation over following up on the mid-year related investigation, that's the Hillary Clinton one, um, discovered on the Wiener laptop the, the, um, it, all the emails they found was free from bias. So they're saying when it came to the Russia investigation, we're not jumping in and making a decision about whether that part of that's uh, free of bias. And of course, that's still pending. Well, if today's results for Manafort were a bad day for the president, yesterday's OIG report was a good day for the president. For, the, for one thing, as you've said, it does describe what at a minimum is gross lack of professionalism on the part of more than one FBI employee. We've now got uh, three agents and two attorneys were exchanging private emails reflecting their personal uh, feelings with respect to the president. And there's the natural thought that some of that infected their ability uh, to conduct the investigation free from bias. Layer on top of that, the IG's conclusions that uh, Jim Comey's actions were extraordinary and insubordinate. And the president's decision to fire Comey actually looks a little better now, right? I mean, if, if he was firing an insubordinate, 
subordinate uh, subordinate. And if it, if that factors into whether Mueller is considering obstruction charges against him, he can now point to this IG report and say even they think that he went rogue on a number of things uh, and they were not very flattering in their assessment of Mr. Comey as FBI director. There is a new one now. Christopher Ray. We'll see how he does. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul Rosenzweig, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right. President Trump putting the squeeze on China with new tariffs. So how will China respond? Plus, President Trump considering a face-to-face meeting with Vladimir Putin this summer. Michael Allen joins us to talk about both topics next.